Hey everyone, today's video is for those who are thinking of getting an iPad as a digital sketchpad but haven't decided which one to get yet. Should you get the small one versus the big one, the new one versus the old one, and which one is more worth the money? Let's see what we have here. This is the iPad 6 from 2018, this is the iPad Pro from 2017, and this is the new iPad Pro from 2018, the one with the smaller body design. The first thing I want to talk about is portability. Where are you going to be using the iPad? Do you need to hold the iPad with one hand and draw with the other? That is important to know because these two iPad Pros, they are significantly larger and significantly more heavy. So if you're going to be using the iPad on the train, for example, I use this small one on the train while drawing, I can hold this rather comfortably, even with the case attached for long periods of time without feeling fatigue or feeling tired but I will not be able to hold this two with one hand and draw it's going to be really tiring so when it comes to portability the small iPad the 9.7 inch the 10.5 inch or the 11 inch iPad Pros they are going to be so much more comfortable to use with one hand this is a sketch that I drew on the train a few days ago so these are actually passengers and other commuters on the train so when I'm drawing on the train, sometimes I hold the iPad in portrait orientation like this, sometimes in landscape orientation. Now when you're holding this in landscape format, most of the weight is going to the other side. I'm right-hander, so I hold it with my left hand. And most of the weight is going to the right side. So if you're going to get the larger iPad Pro, like the 12.9 inch, there is no way that you can hold the iPad like this for long periods of time and draw. Now this iPad 9.7 inch, this is 469 grams. That's the Wi-Fi model. Now the good thing about the 10.5 inch and the 11 inch iPad Pro is the weight is very similar to this, so they are still very portable. Even when you attach a case to it, it is still going to be more comfortable to draw on when you're holding it with one hand when you're traveling around. I prefer to draw on a larger surface because there is more space to work with, but if that means the tablet has to be heavier, that would mean that I would be more reluctant to use it because it's going to be very tiring to hold a tablet. The thumb is the part that's going to get tiring because it's always pressing down on this part and the heavier the iPad, the more tiring your thumb will get. This is another sketch that I sketched a few days ago, also on the train. When it comes to drawing capability, the small iPad, the iPad non-pro, this is a very capable tablet. Now the advantage of the larger iPad Pro is you have a larger screen to work with and there is more RAM so you can work on more complex drawings. Um, this small iPad Pro, the 9.7 inch, this only has 2 gigs of RAM. And if you are using Procreate, if you are drawing at 4K resolution, it can only give you 20 layers, a maximum of 20 layers. But on the iPad Pro, it can give you a maximum of 60 layers. 20 layers for me is definitely more than enough. For this simple sketch, I'm only using two layers. One for the line art, one for the color. Maybe if I need to add shadows, that would be another layer, a total of three. Maybe another layer for highlights, four. Usually for my sketches, I don't use more than five layers. But of course, the number of layers that you need will depend on your workflow and the type of work that you create. This 9.7 inch iPad has a dimension of around 20 centimeters on the long edge and 14.5 centimeters on the short edge. Now this working area is quite similar to an A5 sketchbook. It's just slightly smaller. So this is still a pretty nice area to work with. If you have more budget, maybe you can consider upgrading to the 10.5 inch or the 11 inch iPad Pro. That would give you an extra diagonal inch. And this is quite useful if you are using apps with a lot of user interface elements. Now for Procreate, the user interface elements, they are quite small. We have all these little buttons on the side. This is quite small. So it's not that big of a deal if you are using Procreate on a small screen. If you are using an app like Midibank Paint Pro, when you have the palettes on the screen, you're going to be left with a smaller working area to draw on. Of course, you can turn off the palettes. Personally, when I'm using this app, I like to leave this on because it's quite convenient. 
and now I have a smaller area to work with. This is the 9.7 inch beside the 12.9 inch. Now the iPad Pro not only has a larger screen, it also has higher resolution, but the pixel density is the same, so the level of sharpness is the same. So all these words here, the fonts, the icons, they are going to be equally as sharp on the iPad Pro as on the iPad. The main difference is the amount of area you are left with after you have other user interface elements on the screen. So on the large iPad Pro, you can see this area that is taken up by the palette. This area here is exactly the same as this area here. But of course, with the larger screen, you have more working area. Here's a comparison of the different iPad and iPad Pro sizes. So this white box here, this is 9.7 inch. The 10.5 inch is proportionally bigger and it's represented by this um, gray box. And the 11 inch model is actually wider compared to the 10.5 inch, but it has the same height. So you're going to get a wider aspect ratio with the 11 inch iPad Pro. As for the 12.9 inch, the aspect ratio is the same as the 10.5 and the 9.7. These three tablets, the 9.7, the 10.5, and the 11 inch, they have roughly the same weight, which means if you need something portable, but you still want a large screen, then the 10.5 inch and the 11 inch tablets, the iPad Pros, they are more appropriate for you. Compared to an A5 sized sketchbook, the 10.5 inch iPad Pro is exactly the same size, the 11 inch iPad Pro is wider, and the 9.7 inch is slightly smaller. Size and weight is very important to consider if you need portability. Now let's talk about drawing experience. The first difference in user experience is the iPad Pro has a laminated screen. There is almost no gap between the glass surface that you are drawing on and the LCD display that is beneath. What this means is when you are drawing, it would seem like the lines, they are appearing directly beneath the tip of the Apple Pencil. The iPad non-pro does not have a laminated screen, so there is a gap between the glass surface and the LCD beneath. So there is this gap there, so the lines, they will appear a slight distance away from the pen tip. And not just that, when you tap on the screen, you are going to hear a more hollow sound. On the iPad Pro, you are going to hear a more solid sound. Yes, there is a gap between the glass and the LCD below, but it's not really an issue because most of the time when you're drawing, you're actually looking straight onto the screen like this. It's not as if this is a huge screen where you're drawing here and you can see the gap here. You're actually drawing, looking at the screen top down like this. You're not going to see any parallax issues at all. The other thing I want to talk about is responsiveness. Now, the iPad may not have the 120 hertz refresh rate for the screen, but it is still very responsive. When you're drawing long lines like this, the lines, they still come up pretty smooth. There is no lag at all. Whether or not you can perceive the lag or differences in refresh rates depend on the app that you use as well. For example, with Procreate, I can draw lines like this very quickly and the lines, they will appear on screen very smoothly, very quickly, almost instantly. That's the same on iPad Pro as well. Procreate is a very responsive app. With other apps, sometimes when you're drawing, sometimes the lines may appear bit by bit and you can see the line trailing behind the pen tip. So you may see some lag, but that's actually because of the refresh rate. If you're just drawing at moderate speed, you should not see any lag or latency issues at all, either on the iPad or on the iPad Pro. The area where I see the difference in the refresh rate would be when I am zooming up and down. So on the iPad Pro, this is smoother compared to on the iPad because of the 120 Hertz refresh rate. Another feature of the iPad Pro screen is the True Tone technology, which takes into account the ambient lighting to display colors a bit more naturally. 
it doesn't affect drawing experience in any way. And in terms of brightness of the screen, both the iPad and the iPad Pro, they are very bright screens. Usually when I am drawing outdoors, I would turn the brightness all the way up to the max. And the battery life on the iPad and the iPad Pro, fantastic. If you're drawing non-stop at maximum brightness, it can probably last around four, five, six hours. So that is actually very good battery life. If you're drawing at maximum brightness outdoors for long periods of time, both the iPad and the iPad Pro, they are going to get a bit warm. So when you're resting on the surface and drawing, you're definitely going to feel the heat. That's unavoidable because um, you're really pushing the brightness. Even though the iPad Pro has significantly better specs, better processor, more RAM, um, the overall drawing experience is quite good even on the iPad. There are other differences, uh, for example, when you are opening files. I'm going to open these two files which are similar. So when opening the file on the iPad, it's like a split second slower. Is that a big deal? Not to me. Even when painting with big textured brush, the iPad can keep up the speed as well. Of course, if your art is going to be very complex, you need a lot of layers, you need to use high resolution, you need to use textured brushes, then having better processor, more RAM is definitely going to help you. With Procreate, at 4K, you can get 60 layers, and on the iPad, it's just 20 layers, as mentioned earlier. But when it comes to drawing this sort of sketch, uh, it is effortless on the iPad as it is on the iPad Pro. The other difference is depending on which iPad or iPad Pro you are getting, you may need to get different Apple Pencils. So the original Apple Pencil uh, looks like this. The new Apple Pencil looks like this. Drawing experience is the same. They still have palm rejection, same levels of pressure sensitivity, just that with the new Apple Pencil, you have the additional function of being able to tap or double tap to get some shortcuts, for example, changing brushes or other types of function. But drawing experience, um, pretty much the same. All right, my overall recommendation, if you are not sure which to get, the iPad or the iPad Pro, I would probably recommend you get the iPad because it's significantly cheaper and you can use the time with the iPad to see whether or not you are serious with digital art. If you have more budget, then just go for the iPad Pro straight away. You can choose the 2017 model which I think is more worth the money compared to the 2018 model, which is significantly more expensive. As for which size to get, ask yourself where you will be using the tablets. If you are going to be using it while commuting, you want to use it with one hand, definitely go for the smaller iPad or the iPad Pros because they are significantly lighter and less tiring to use. With the 12.9 inch, Personally, I only use them when I am at a table or when I am seated down using them on the lap. But with the smaller iPad Pros or the iPad, I can hold them with one hand and draw with the other. It's not as tiring compared to using such a large tablet. If you have already decided on getting the iPad Pros, should you get the 2017 models or the 2018 models? This is a difficult question to answer because everybody has different preferences. Personally, for me, I believe the 2017 model is more worth the money because it is several hundred dollars cheaper and the drawing experience is the same as the 2018 model. It really comes down to whether or not you find the new features helpful like the Face ID, the smaller body design, smaller bezels, the Apple Pencil 2, the better specs, uh, whether or not that is really worth the extra hundred dollars for you. That is a question only you can answer. So that's all for my video today. I would love to hear from you. Which iPad did you get for drawing purposes? Um, let me know in the comment section below. And if you have any questions, uh, let me know as well. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.